In this video, I'll talk about an application of the first and second derivatives to motion, specifically position, velocity, and acceleration. So very often we'll have a function which we typically call s of t uh, that represents the position of a, an object. In this case, we're talking about a car. Uh, the units are miles, and we're talking about the distance that is east of Pittsburgh, t hours after 12 p.m. So if we're talking about distance in miles east of Pittsburgh, one important thing to notice is that if we were at position zero, then that represents Pittsburgh. So if I am zero miles east of Pittsburgh, then I'm in Pittsburgh. If I'm over here at, say, 30 on the number line, that represents a point that is 30 miles east of Pittsburgh. And if I'm over here at, say, negative 20 on my number line, so I could say negative 20 miles east of Pittsburgh, but nobody really talks like that. If you told somebody that you were negative 20 miles east of Pittsburgh, they'd probably think you were crazy. Instead, what we say is 20 miles west of Pittsburgh. So a negative position simply means that you're on the other side of your starting point. In this case, my starting point is Pittsburgh. If I'm on the positive side of the number line, that means that I'm east of Pittsburgh. And if I'm on the negative side of the number line, that just means that I'm west of Pittsburgh. So if we're looking at our function s, saying something like s of 5 equals 40 can be interpreted as at 5 p.m. So the 5 is my t, right? That's the number that's inside the parentheses. That's my t. At 5 p.m., comma, you, the car is, or you are, 40 miles east of Pittsburgh. So the 40 here represents the position. Uh, just as another example, if I said s of 6 equals negative 30, then that means at 6 p.m. the car is 30 miles west of Pittsburgh. So notice that in the sentence that I'm writing, I'm explaining not only what the 6 means, not only what the 30 means, but I'm also explaining what the negative sign means. So in my sentence, I don't use the number negative 30. What I do is interpret what that negative sign means. So whenever we're trying to interpret these kinds of numerical statements, we don't really want to use a negative number if that wouldn't make sense in our sort of normal way of speaking. Okay, now let's bring the derivative into this. So we're going to call this v of t, but it really could also be, be called s prime of t. That's the derivative of position, and in this case we call that velocity. So the velocity of the car is the derivative of position. Now remember that we've talked about, when we talk about derivatives, the units here are going to be the change in y over the change in x. So the units for position are miles, and the units for my t are hours. So the units here are going to be miles per hour, and so as you might expect, this is going to give us some indication of the speed of the car. So if I were going to write a, uh, an algebraic statement like v of 3 equals 20, what that's saying is that the position of the car at 3 p.m. is changing Remember, derivative tells us a rate of change, changing at a rate of 20 miles per hour. Now, what that doesn't tell us is where the car is. So let's just hypothetically say that we knew that the car was at 10 on my number line. Then another way to think about what this sentence is telling us is that, assuming this rate of change doesn't itself change, an hour from now, our position is going to go up by 20, and we're going to be over here at 30. Now, our car could speed up or slow down, but let's just ignore that for the moment. What this is telling us is that the car is going at a speed of 20 miles per hour, and more importantly, it's going east. Remember, this side of my number line represents east, this side of my number line represents west. So my car is, and a more natural way to say this would be at 3 p.m., the car is traveling 
east, right, that's the direction I'm going in, at a rate of 20 miles per hour. Our original sentence wasn't wrong, it's just not the way that we normally talk about things moving, right? We don't talk about the position changing, we talk about the speed at which the car is going. But when we use that language, we've got to be careful, because what if I said uh, v of 5 equals negative 30? So what would it mean for the velocity here to be negative? So now let's, again, we don't know the position of the car, but let's just hypothetically knew that maybe the car was here at, at 0 for this second uh, scenario. So the blue was the first scenario, here's the second scenario. So what this means is that, uh, assuming that this ch rate of change doesn't itself change, again, assuming that this speed is constant, the position is going to go down by 30. Remember, negative rate of change, just like a negative slope, means that your quantity is going down. So this would mean that after an hour, the car's position would go down by 30. Another way to say that is that the car is traveling west at a rate of 30 miles per hour. So again, the sort of natural language way to say this would be at 5 p.m., the car is traveling west at a rate of, now again, we have to be careful, the negative sign is what tells us that the car is traveling west. The speedometer in the car is still going to read 30 miles an hour. So we don't say that it's traveling west at negative 30 miles an hour. That would be sort of a double negative. The car is traveling west at a rate of 30 miles per hour. So the important thing to, to notice here is that there's a difference between speed and velocity. Speed is this quantity. Speed is just what the speedometer says without any notion of the direction in which you're traveling. West at a rate of 30 miles per hour, if you include the speed and direction, that's velocity. So velocity can be negative, and when the velocity is negative, that tells us that we're traveling in the opposite direction. Speed cannot be negative. Speed is whatever the dial of the speedometer on your car reads. That number never goes below zero. If you think about the speedometer on a car, it bottoms out at zero. So the speed is always a non-negative quantity, but the velocity can be negative. And if the velocity is negative, that's just telling you that you're traveling in the opposite direction. All right, now let's think about the derivative of velocity. So a of t, which is s double prime of t, which can also be thought of as v prime of t, the derivative of velocity, that's called acceleration. Now again, let's think about the units here. The units are change in y over change in x. So the units for velocity are miles per hour, and then we divide that by the units for our hours. So the units for velocity are miles per hour. Divide by hours, we get miles per hour per hour. That's our unit for acceleration. Sometimes this is written miles per hour squared. If you've taken a physics class, that's a very common way to say this, um, but you can also just think of it as miles per hour per hour. So let's think about what this means. So what if I wrote a, a sentence like a of 2 equals 5? So this means at 2 p.m. That's what the 2 means. So what does the 5 mean? Well, this means the velocity, remember this is the derivative of velocity, so that means the velocity is changing at a rate of 5 miles per hour per hour. Okay, but what does that mean? What does that tell us? Well, it's tricky because we don't know what the actual velocity is. So again, let's hypothetically say that we knew what the velocity was. Suppose that we knew that v of 2 was 30. So let's say that we also knew, in addition to knowing that the acceleration is 5 miles per hour per hour, let's say that we also knew that the velocity was 30 miles per hour. So that means that v of 3, again, assuming the situation doesn't change, v of 3, well, the velocity is changing at a rate of 5 miles per hour per hour. So if the velocity was 30 at 2 p.m., then an hour later, it's going to have gone up by 5. So that means that we would predict that the velocity at 3 p.m. would be 35 miles per hour. 
And if we go another hour into the future, at 4 p.m., again, assuming the situation doesn't change, we would ex expect our velocity to go up by 5 miles per hour again. And v of 5 would be 45, and so on. So this is what the acceleration tells us. The acceleration tells us the rate at which the velocity is changing. So if we knew what the velocity was and we knew what the acceleration was, we can make predictions as to what the velocity will be in the future. In this case, because my velocity started at 30 and started going up by 5 each time, our car is speeding up. Our speedometer starts off saying 30, then it says 35, then it says 40, and so on. But alternatively, let's suppose that initially, remember, because we didn't really know what the velocity was, we were just sort of taking a guess and using an example. What if we knew that at 2 p.m., my car's velocity was negative 40? Again, remember what that means. That means my car is simply traveling west at a rate of 40 miles per hour. But the acceleration tells me the rate at which the velocity is changing. And in this case, this says that the velocity goes up, like the, the number goes up on the number line at 5 miles per hour per hour. So what would I expect V of 3 to be? Well, my negative 40 is going to go up by 5. But when I increase a negative number, it goes up towards 0. So if I add 5 to negative 40, I get negative 35. And then if another hour goes by, I add 5 to my velocity again. Another hour goes by, I add 5 to my velocity again. And notice what's happening. My car is actually slowing down. Remember, the speed is simply the number without the minus sign. So my speed starts out at 40 miles per hour, but my velocity is negative 40. And the acceleration is the rate of change of the velocity, not the rate of change of speed. It's the rate of change of the velocity. So if the velocity is negative, and the acceleration is positive, that means my car is actually slowing down. It's a little counterintuitive, but the acceleration tells me the rate at which that number is changing. And if that number is negative, but increasing, that means it's going up towards zero. And that means that the number on my speedometer is actually going down. So just to summarize the interplay between acceleration and speed here, if the velocity is positive and the acceleration is positive, the car is speeding up. This is the sort of most intuitive case, right? That's the case that will probably make the most sense to you is, is this first case here. If the velocity is negative and the acceleration is positive, then the car is slowing down. That's the case that we just talked about in that second example. If the velocity is positive and the acceleration is negative, then the car is slowing down. That one also should make some intuitive sense. You want to think of negative acceleration as slowing down. The velocity is decreasing, so the car is slowing down. And then this last one is another one that's a little bit counterintuitive. If the velocity is negative and the acceleration is also negative, that means that velocity number is going down. But if it's already negative, then making that negative number go down makes it go farther away from zero. And so in effect, the car is actually speeding up. It's traveling west, but it's traveling west faster and faster and faster. So understand what it means for each of these three quantities, position, velocity, and acceleration, to be positive and negative. Position being positive tells you that you are in the positive side of whatever your starting point is. Negative position means that you are located on the negative side. Positive velocity means you're traveling in the direction of the positive side. Negative velocity means you're traveling in the direction of the negative side. And then positive and negative acceleration tell you whether you're speeding up or slowing down according to these uh, points here. So practice with this, do some sample problems, and you should get the hang of it.